Uh, the session is is being recorded at the moment. So, uh, where did I stop? So, in terms of your planning, your SDGs, you need to have a model that you have to work with. If you are making use of the P process, you need to identify some of the steps in it. And what do we mean by SDGs? Can anyone help with that? What do we mean by SDGs? Sustainable development um, goals. Goals. Sustainable, Sustainable development, development goals. goals. And in Nigeria, how many do we have? 17. 17. Okay, good. I'm glad we all have an idea of what there's an SDG, uh, what SDG means. Sustainable development goals. And in Nigeria, we have up to 17 of it, one of which has to do with the girl child education, education for the girl child or education generally, but um, in most instances, it is more channeled to the girl child. And that is actually playing out in uh, recent development when it comes to education. It's playing out in our recent uh, generation as well. Current generation, even from the attendance of this class right now, we have more females than the male. So I think the next SDG will start looking at the boy child education. And I think that's where we'll be going next now, because it seems they've been able to achieve that girl child education to an extent. Now, if I've been using that as an example. Early, I used that as an example earlier on when we were looking at when we were looking at ACADA model. ACADA model as well is a method of planning. First, you need to identify one intervention that you intend to do. We'll still be going back to that of Moyemeka stylishly, but that of Moyemeka is something that has to be done on a large scale. When I say large scale, something that has to be done at the national level. I think I, th I treated something in line with that using the P process. And I treated something in line with that using the SEM model as well. But ACADA model will always take care of what is known as um, the, the rural communities, the local communities, as well as the states as, uh, in particular. But we can as well extend that of ACADA model, not that we can't extend it, but we need something that is more result-oriented, more sustainable. So for me, I would rather settle for the P process or I settle for the SEM model. That of the SEM model gives us the avenue or gives us the opportunity for us to be able to explore, understand what people actually need not what the government says the people need. Understanding what the people actually need and not what the government feels they need. Government sometimes, government representatives sometimes come to our area, dig a ball, put to solar, uh, uh, power, power you to solar, and then they come back in another six months and everything is gone. That is the people sending a feedback to the government to say, come, this is not what we need. So we need to work with a specific plan towards that SDG. First, you need to identify the SDG. This is what we intend to do. The SDG at the global level, at the global stage, because that of the material you have in Moimika is looking at the aftermath of the Second World War. The aftermath of the Second World War where the world thought or considered the need for them to, to bring the underdeveloping countries up, not out of colonialism, we should understand one thing. One, majority of this developed world we have today, the British colonized uh, Nigeria. And we equally have some um, countries in Africa, from Mali, Senegal, and we're seeing what is happening currently when it has to do with the coup d'etat. What is happening? What led to that? Is because they were equally waiting for some level of development from their col uh, colonial masters or the colonialists. But what were they getting in return? They were getting in return people that are still, uh, uh, what, what do I say? What do I taking advantage of their resources? And they are not using these resources to further develop their own environment. Now, after the Second World War, what happened was there was a global meeting, and that was what led to what is known as uh, the Marshall 
uh what do i call it oh into the plan. The, plan. the marshall plan thank you that was led to the marshall plan i uh, see let us move this under developing country is because they don't want to abuse us it is a poor country but they have to bring use make use of a nomenclature for it let us bring this under developing country from a country that is struggling from a country that has faced so many destruction to a co country that we can channel their energy towards industrialization but we make post a question in the first page of that of that material by saying what development plan can be put to use to further develop these developing countries or what better example of development strategy could there be for the developing countries in a hurry to improve their own social and economic conditions that's why the fact that the Marshall law uh the Marshall plan rather was 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 uh brought to bear and it was actually very successful because the Marshall plan had actually worked like magic and in less than 10 years it turned destruction and devastation into construction and industrialization so what better example of development strategy that's the question moe maker is posing here uh followed by all the grammar grammar and other sub uh, topics that he looked at what better example of development strategy could there be for the developing countries in a hurry to improve their own social and economic conditions tinubu recently at uh, one of uh, his meeting i think at the uh, i don't know the, the name of the meeting but i was able to see the clip on twitter where he said stop donating to africa africa can actually develop herself uh, develop develop herself enough of this donation enough of all of these things you are giving us because they've been giving us some of the support financial resources and so many other other uh, support they could help to give us since the second world war up to this moment we are still crying for international support and which is why he's saying please let us cut the style ties africa can as well develop on its own let us see ourselves as equal partners because the marshall plan actually gave room for that so if the marshall plan could get to work if the marshall plan worked in europe then it should work for former for the former colonies as well or it should work for the developing countries however one thing actually killed some of these developing countries nigeria uh, 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 as an example the major reason why this marshall plan had failed to even work in developing countries today is as a result of impatience of these developing countries to develop we equally want to rise i do tell some of my colleagues here that see nigeria will have been the the the, the united states they will have been the dubai of Africa today, if only our independent independent uh, didn't come ten years early, or ten years earlier, our independence came ten years too early. Ten years too early. Had it been we got our independence in 1970 or in 1980, I want to believe, strongly believe the white man would have refused to leave Nigeria. Because we were equally very eager to develop, forgetting that there is a plan somewhere. And we're equally the likes of our law uh, in Amdi Azikwe and so many other political uh, uh, figures then were equally eager for development. And they put all of their machineries in place to ensure that they attain this development through the media or through any means at all. And what has been happening ever since, it has been. Our founding fathers had a good vision for the country, but afterwards, what has been happening up until this present moment, uh, this uh, this moment, is nothing to write home about. Telling us the Marshall Plan, if it could work in Europe, and Europe is one place we all want to go today, if it could work in the United Kingdom, if it could work in America, then it's something that should be able to work in Nigeria, because they, over there, were able to even turn their destruction to devastation uh, that is destruction and devastation into construction and industrialization that is what china is uh, uh, enjoying today the hiroshima and nagasaki war then as well they were they, they were not devastated by it but rather they picked up their own pieces and moved from destruction and devastation into construction and industrialization 
But Africa, the 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 we are we are experiencing the other side of this, which is not supposed to be so. So the Marshall Plan indeed serves as a notable example of a development strategy that had a substantial positive impact on the economic and social conditions of recipient countries. And I'm talking when I talk about recipient countries, I'm talking about China, Europe, the the, the countries we have even in in Germany and so on. While it was implemented in a unique post World War II context. There are valuable lessons as well. We all could as well, uh, we all as, as members of the developing countries could pick from this. And probably if any one of us get to power someday, we can actually implement some of this uh, uh, Marshall Plan because it goes a long way at improving, at developing the country. Into, from, we, we experienced that in Singapore, from a third world country uh, from a from a developing country or underdeveloped country into what they have today. So, what are the takeaways from the Marshall Plan that can inform strategies for underdeveloping countries for them to move from the uh, destruction and devastation to uh, uh, industrialization? Number one is investment in infrastructure. Investment in infrastructure. So, the Marshall Plan here emphasizes the importance of rebuilding and modernizing infrastructure. We have to rebuild. We have to modernize the way we do things, including the way we, 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 we transport our goods, our transportation networks. We have to improve on it. Our energy system, we have to improve on it. Our industrial facilities, we have to improve on it. So developing countries can prioritize infrastructure development to create, first, a solid foundation for economic growth. One thing is killing us in Nigeria currently, and that is lack of blueprints towards development. So if, if, if investing in infrastructure can actually take place, then quite a lot of things will work. I think the APC governments, I'm not a, 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 a supporter of any political party, but I think they have a plan. If there's one thing Bubu was able to do, it has to do with road. Lagos Ibadan Expressway today from Kwara State to Ofa, from Ilori to Ofa, before we're taking us less than almost six to seven hours. Today, you can go in less than four hours, 30 minutes. You are in Lagos already. Meaning they are trying to develop what the infrastructure. And by starting, they pick, developing countries need to pick some of this investment in, in infrastructure piece by piece. If it's transportation network we are looking in this first, four, uh, first your first four years, look at it. If the next one is about energy, the rate at which there is light in Lagos, the last time I was in Lagos, was different uh, uh, to, to what I used to experience. If it's about energy, you pick it up. If it's about industrial facilities, which is why from the days of good luck, Jonathan, to Buhari, to, to the current administration of Bola Metunubu today, each and every one of them is inviting investors to come and invest. And what are they investing in? The industries. Come up with industry that could help us move from this our struggling stage. We equally have quite a lot of resources to equally offer. So a lot uh, of these uh, developing countries need to adopt the Marshall Plan because that was the uh, uh, first thing they had to do in terms of rebuilding. Rebuilding is very, very key for the Marshall Plan to take place, particularly when developing countries are making use of it. Number two that uh, we have to look at uh, from lessons from this Marshall Plan is uh, the human capital development, education today and workforce training, uh, education and workforce training were integral components of the Marshall Plan, education and workforce training. So developing countries can equally invest in education and skill development to enhance the capabilities of their workforce and improve on their productivity. An uneducated environment is as good as an environment who is not ready to develop at all. So investing in some of this, in, in, in some of the skill acquisition from tech to so many other uh, uh, skill, uh, skills that are available today is going, to, is going to be an addition to the country itself. And investing in education, the, 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 one of the lowest budgets that we get to have yearly in Nigeria is that of education. Forgetting the fact that they all pass through the same school. They all pass through the same quality education. The quality education they enjoyed, we, during this, uh, 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 yeah, we, we, some of us in this generation could not even enjoy 10% of it. 
So investing in education and workforce training amongst developing countries will actually put them at, uh, in, in the world map. Another thing from lessons from the Marshall Plan that developing countries could make use of for their own development towards a, a sustainable economy is private partner, uh, public private partnership, public private partnership. The Marshall Plan encourage cooperation between governments and the private sectors. Not that it is the governments that will keep telling the people, uh, or, it will, or what is referred to as information dump, just dumping information on the people. This is what we just want you to do. In terms of the media, they make, they are the, the government using what is known as the authoritarian media, 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 instead of allowing uh, private entities to equally come for, for not only for competition, but rather for them to be able to feed the people the right information that they need to know. How many of us still get to watch NTA today? Absolutely, maybe 10% of us, except those of us that works at, at, at the National Television Authority, or Nigerian Television Authority. So there should be that public-private partnership. The Marshall Plan encourages cooperation between government and the private sectors. So developing countries can as well facilitate partnerships to attract foreign and domestic investments. And that is one thing each, and every, each of our governments were, were clamoring for. Jonathan did a wonderful job with that, but was sidelined with this issue of Boko Haram and terrorism in Nigeria, thus scaring off investors to come and invest in the country. And they should leverage on some of this private sector's expertise. We cannot do it alone. Dangote currently is um, uh, employing at least maybe 40 to 50% of uh, uh, foreign expertise in his refineries. And then maybe the rest should be Nigerians or people from other, other countries. So the public-private partnership should be there, which is part of the Marshall Plan. Another one we should look at is the economic diversification economic diversification economic diversification the plan promoted economic diversification i'm talking about the marshall plan and how did they promote this by supporting various industries it doesn't leave them alone to say okay this is the textile industry this is the telecommunication industry this is the film you know this is the movie industry how can they equally assess government loans how can they equally benefit from the government of the day so as to improve on what they are doing in terms of the economy. So developing countries can as well aim for diversification to reduce reliance on a single sector and build resilience. By building this resilience, it allows them to be able to stand firm on their feet and ensure they are able to deliver the best for their own country. One thing is missing in Nigeria, we keep talking about the hike of, food, uh, uh, of, of, of price, of, uh, uh, of commodities and talking about food. What is happening? A lot of us are rushing to Lagos. A lot of us are going to developed societies, developed cities. So, so when we move to this place, who are we leaving the farming for in the village? Who are those in charge of farming? Who are those in charge of cattle rearing? Everybody wants to be in the city. Everybody wants to make name for themselves. Now, when you make that money, how do you feed? So we need to, there has to be a, an, an aim for diversification. If others, if 70% of, um, of uh, members of the country, members of the society, we shouldn't forget that these, all of us, are equally beneficiaries of whatever government is bringing to us. But instead of government talking to us, rather they should talk with us. If they are talking to us, it's as good as telling us, this is what you should go and do. But if they're talking with us, we have to sit down together to discuss and reach a logical conclusion. So developing countries can aim for this diversification to reduce reliance on just only the governments. And that's why I'll, I'll, that will still take us back to partnership. We need to diversify in terms of economy. And by that, by that diversification, it removes the reliance and encourage uh, resilience or, or build what is known as resilience. So the next one we should look at is... Um, uh, for, for developing countries to, to, to make use of the Marshall Plan, they have to look at transparency and accountability. And that's, we all can agree, or we all can agree that it is missing, not only in Nigeria, it is missing all over the world. So the Marshall Plan required recipient countries to provide detailed plans for aid utilization. If we are requesting for aid from developed countries, 
we need to be able to give them a detailed plan. Provide them detailed plans. This is what I will be using this thing for. As the head of the government, or as a president, or as a dictator of this country, or a country that is operating a monarchical system of government, as a king, or as the emir, this is what I intend to make you to use this for. It's just like us writing grants. And with states, categorically, this is what I'll use this amount of money for, this is it, and then do what is known as an, an evaluation before you give your report at the end of the day. So developing countries can prioritize transparency, good governance, and accountability in their development, in their development effort to ensure that resources are used efficiently and effectively. We live in a country where, we, I don't want to use the word lawless country, because to an extent, if the son or a daughter of, of a poor man commits any atrocity, he's going to jail, but the rich doesn't, meaning transparency is missing. Accountability is equally missing here, and we'll hang everything on good go governance. So we need these three to come to play as, develop as developing countries. And that's part of the Marshall Plan as well. We need some of those things to come together before we can say, yes, development can start, uh, can, 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 can kick off. And the next we should look at is regional cooperation. Regional cooperation. The plan, which is the Marshall Plan, encouraged European nations to collaborate on economic recovery, meaning Nigeria only, we cannot do it alone. I think we're able to make it of a little bit here and there of the Marshall Plan when that's with this regional cooperation. Sao Tome today is an annex of Nigeria. I call it annex because at the point where their government uh, uh, was overthrown, uh, their president traveled and a, a, a military officer toppled the government. The next thing Obasanjo did was to just put a, place a, uh, put a phone call through and say, my friend, if you don't step down from that place, you are in trouble. The following day, the man had to come to Abuja himself to apologize, and they went back to their democracy. Meaning there has to be regional cooperation. Regional cooperation, Nigeria is the one supplying Ghana electricity. Cameroon also supplying Cameroon uh, premium auto spirit, which is fuel. Now, because of the subsidy today, Niger as well, majority of them are clamoring. But there should be that cooperation. If you are giving me this, I can I stand a chance of giving you this back. More like trade and butter. Give me this, I give you this, or sell this to me, I sell this to you. The coup d'etat in Niger today is not just political over there for them, but it is to forestall the regional cooperation. Because currently the Nigerian government is trying to build uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, but more like a, a pipeline that could transport uh, liquefied natural gas from Nigeria to almost almost to Russia. But the international community as well, or other countries that are not in good terms with Russia, or uh, sorry, from Nigeria to France, that are not in good terms with uh, uh, with France or with Russia, would rather say no. They let us put a bridge in between. So the regional cooperation is very, very key for developing countries to grow because we cannot, development cannot be, be, be done in isolation. And next one is long-term commitment. The Marshall Plan spans several years, aligned for sustained development, uh, development effort. It is not by magic. No developing nation will, or the developing nation will become the first world nation in less than four years or in less than eight years. It takes time because the wrath in all of these countries did not come there just in a day or in four years. They've been happening gradually. So the long-term co commitment has to be, and when we talk about this long-term commitment, it shouldn't be from the government alone. It should also come from the people. Developing countries can adopt a long-term perspective in their development strategies, recognizing that meaningful change often takes time. If the country, our own country here, Nigeria, could rather do just only one thing, set a blueprint, whether you are APC or, or PDP or Labour Party or APGA or SDP, if it is your representative that eventually becomes a, a, the president, he shouldn't come with his own fresh idea. Work towards that blueprint. That is the only time developing countries can achieve what is known as a long-term commitment or a long-term uh, 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 development. So everybody in the nation or everybody in the country is aware that 
this person is working towards this blueprint. And there should be some level of advocacy that still goes back to the people to say, this administration is working towards uh, a transportation network. Or this administration is done with our transportation network. The coming administration, the coming president, will be working on maintaining that uh, uh, transportation uh, uh, network while he will equally be focusing on energy. If another one comes, if he's able to fix it in less than four to eight years, then another person comes to maintain transportation and energy and then focus up, pick up another project as well. So these are some of the things we need. It is a long-term commitment. It's not something that could, that could be done overnight. So the next one is adaptability. And speaking of that, adaptability, the Marshall Plan was adaptable and tailored to the specific needs of each country. It's not that there, there's a Marshall Plan somewhere that says Nigeria needs snow. It is not snow that is our problem right now. An average Nigerian will tell you the price of premium auto spirit should go to 100 naira or 50 naira. Let us, let us at least, let the poor breathe. So developing countries can design flexible strategies that can address unique circumstances because they are the ones that understand uh, where, where, what problem they're actually facing or what they are going through at the moment. And the, the next one we can equally look at for the Marshall Plan and what developing countries could rather make use of here is the geopolitical considerations. Geopolitical considerations. So the Marshall Plan was implemented in a Cold War context, so with political motivations. So developing countries should, or can as well, carefully assess geopolitical dynamics and international partnerships when crafting their own development strategies. The plan you have for uh, for Lagosians is different from the plan you can bring you 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 can have for people living in Ilorin. Same way it is different from the plan you can give to people living in Akwaibo. It should differ. Allow these people to craft their development strategy. It's a pity that the, uh, what's the name that was held in 2014 under the government of um, Jonathan, we all were expecting Buhari to at least look at this, I don't know if it's a national convention, to at least look at what came out of that national convention because a representative from each geopolitical zones of uh, geopolitical yes geopolitical zones and political environment were able to come together to say this is what we want in our own environment and by that we can implement what each of this environment actually needs that's way it's going to bring about development not that we we the government talks to us that this is what we'll be doing that they should rather do what talk with us let us be part of it not that you implement you you do your bureaucracy thingy amongst yourself and then you dump it is called sometimes when the fact is that information dump you just dump into the people and then you go go ahead you go home or you you, you are done with your turn another person dumps his own plan on the people so the last one we, we, we can as well look at for the marshall plan uh We need to do this in order to assess the impact of their initiatives. We shouldn't forget that everything is about development. And the development is aimed at society. Oh, sorry, I hope everyone can hear me. Please, can you hear me? No, we can't hear you. No, we are just hearing you now. No, we are okay. just coming up now. Sorry, please, where did I stop so I can pick it up from there? Did anyone note the last point? Hello? 
Did anyone not not the last points? I talked about regional cooperation, long term commitment. I think you are. I think you were when I lost you. You were on regional. No geopolitical uh, Con considerations. considerations. Geopolitical mm. considerations. Okay geopolitical considerations please i hope I, please in case you you notice you can hear me please please just let me know i hope you guys can hear me now yes yes sir we can hear you all right okay i have nancy uh mrs nancy please don't the word. last um, point again the last point please uh, I'll be taking it again from geopolitical considerations. Or let me take it before that. Uh, uh, we looked at long-term commitment, uh, where I said the Marshall Plan spanned several years. It is not something that can be done overnight. So we need to. Uh, uh, they, 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 they are on, the Marshall Plan spanned several years, allowing for sustained development effort. So as developing countries as well, we can equally tap into this. And we can adopt a long-term perspective in our development strategies, recognizing that meaningful change often takes time. It won't come overnight. And that was when I gave an example of, gov uh, instead of having uh, different uh, represent uh, uh, party, party politics in Nigeria with different ideology, with different uh, blueprints, with different uh, uh, mode of development, there should be a blueprint, a systematic blueprint that should be in the system that will be there. That one cannot change. This is what we want to achieve in the next 20 years. Come wherever, from APC, PDP, L uh, Labour Party, or APGA, SDP, you have to follow that plan. You dare not change it. That is what we mean by a system. And with this system, it will allow us to have what is known as a long-term commitment towards our own development in Africa or in Nigeria. And the next one is adaptability. The Marshall Plan was adaptable and tailored in to the, tailored to the specific needs of each develop, uh, of each country. Developing countries can design by themselves flexible strategies. They are address their own circumstances and challenges. I know where my own shoe pinches. What I need right now is not what you need. If you are giving me a car right now, I'll tell you I don't need it right now. But if they are giving me a house, I'll say, okay, I think you are tapping to my needs currently. I can always get a car later. Well, for some ladies, if you are giving them gold, they will tell you no. What I want right now is iPhone 15. It depends on their own priorities. So developing countries as well should set this, can set this right. And we need to identify our unique circumstances. What separates us? We all are built differently. Same way communities are built differently. And what are our own what are the challenges we are facing that we intend to make use of the Marshall Plan to solve? And moving on is where I talked about geopolitical considerations. Geopolitical considerations. I hope you can hear me, please. Absolutely, sir. Can hear you. Yes. The geopolitical considerations. The Marshall Plan was implemented in a Cold War context with political motivations. For developing countries, when we say Cold War, we all understand what the meaning of uh, the word Cold War is. Developing countries should carefully assess geopolitical dynamics as well. Nigeria, as a country, has over 250 ethnic groups. Languages, we, 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 we dare not put a specific number on it. Meaning we are different. Geopolitically, we are different. We are, there are, there are so many dynamics. We are not static. They might say English is the official language. Some people do not even understand that English. It's because of our dynamics, our geopolitical dynamics, and our international par partnership. We need to assess this, our geopolitical dynamics, and our international partnership when crafting our development strategies. What is obtainable in terms of development in the north? What they are looking out for now, uh, they, uh, I think Jonathan did something in line with that. Former President Jonathan did something in line with that by trying to take off the almergeries off the streets. What is happening in 2023? They are back to the street again. 
I was in Ninja, was it the last six months or thereabouts? I see they were waiting for me to finish my food so they could rush the remain the, the leftovers. But Jonathan, I was in my head, Jonathan did something for you guys now. What happened? What changed? It's because we did not. It was just an intervention, meaning Jonathan's government only spoke to the people, not with the people. They identified problems quite all right. But did they tell you they are they are they are having issues with the problem they are having? They are okay with the almajiris, having people having so many children and put them into uh, to the street to start begging for arms. While some of them attend Arabic school, it is some of them we we are beginning to feel are actually product of Boko Haram today. So they should access assess this geopolitical dynamics. They need to understand it, and the international partnership as well when crafting their development strategies. Assessing international partnerships here is equally very important. If we fail to assess international partnership, the international community are ready, equally ready to come and dump their ideology in our head. And that is what, what is happening today. The LGBTQ and so many other gender disturbing orientation that they are bringing to Africa today. And as much as they are bringing it, Africa keeps on what? Neglecting it. Why? Because number one, we've equally seek from them certain aids. And what can they sell back to, uh, to us in return? Okay, we've given you this now. Please, we want you to equally adopt this. Democracy is equally an example. Instead of using the military rule, a, a, a dictatorship type, type of uh, government, an authoritarian type of government, why not try democracy? It should be a government of the people, by the people, for the people. So that way we've been able to do what? Adopts the international partnership we are giving them something they are equally selling something back to us a majority of these international uh, countries what they do is to sell what they sell to us is ideology and they, and they will push this ideology with their own narratives from movies to cartoons to so many other ways of selling this ideology they will make use they will, they will invest in it to the point you accept or nearly accept the ideology and the last one that I, I talked about is monitoring and evaluation. There is no development plan that you have to do. If monitoring and evaluation is not there, then it is missing. Go and check it for your ACADA model. Check it for your P process. You always find it there. Evaluation is very key. Because the master plan itself included mechanisms for monitoring progress and evaluating the effectiveness of aid programs. Let us monitor our progress. And let us look at the efficacy of the of the of the of the program that we have pushed to these people. Let us see how effective it, it is. Developing countries can as well emulate some of these things. Monitor, evaluate. So uh, uh, how, how can they do this? They can do this by establishing robust monitoring and evaluation frameworks to assess the impact of their initiatives and make necessary adjustments. So it is important to know that every country is unique. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, sir. Okay. Very well. It is important to note that every country is unique and development strategies should be tailored to their specific needs, to their specific context, and to their specific challenges. While the Marshall Plan serves as an inspirational example, Successful development strategies must consider local conditions, governance structures. They need to consider that as well. They equally need to consider the available resources. We want to be, want Lagos to be like to be like America. What are the resources that we have? We want trans, uh, uh, traffic to reduce in Lagos. What are the resources that we have to reduce that traffic from Marina to Mile Two today, as to a large, to, to, to a minute extent, or by thirty percent? has been able to reduce the the, 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 the the traffic people have to go through. But is it still everybody that has to go through the blue rail line? No. So if we are making use of this, then there should be road there should be milestones and records, uh, recorded successes. So we should consider, when, when developing these strategies, particularly for developing countries, we need to consider our local conditions. We need to consider our government, governance structures. We need to consider available resources and the aspirations of the population. What are the people's yearnings? What are the things that they need? Let us involve. Let us be part of it. Not that you, 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 you plan all of these things in your head and then you just dump it on the people. So moreover, in, in, in today's globalized world, development strategies often benefit 
from international cooperation, trade agreement, and partnership with bilateral and multilateral organizations. So engaging with international community can provide additional resources, uh, expertise, and support for sustainable development. As I said, developments cannot take place in isolation. So again, we should try as much as possible to avoid what is known as information dumping strategy, mm -hmm. which is adopted by uh, governments. Uh, when I say adopted by government of recipient, recipient countries, if you have a, uh, information that you need to share with the people, I think Nigeria to an extent is trying to, to reach, to remove uh, the information dumping strategy by engaging in what is known as a town hall meeting. The only time they, they we find them doing this is during elections. They don't have time for it after election. Not this town hall meeting uh, uh, for for uh, for election to canvass for votes. We can only see them during uh, uh, during election. So uh, 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 we, we should look at it from another angle of uh, development as well. The development should be personal. Development could be personal. Uh, development could be societal, it could be human, it could be physical or material. So, however, development can take place from two different uh, uh, levels. And uh, it can originate from two different levels. The origination at the first level, uh, at the first, uh, first level, leads to uh, thinking and deciding for the people. And that is one mistake. Developing governments at the developing countries should try as much as possible to avoid thinking and deciding for the people. Because when you think and decide for the people, it's as good as seeing development, it's as good as the government seeing development as government's responsibilities. And that is even the way the beneficiaries, which is the populace, will see it. Because we only see that this, this thing you are bringing to us, the idea is only conceived by you, uh, uh, the, the government of the day. So who are we to now say no to it? It's just like saying there's going to be coffee in Lagos between 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. We all will be rushing home, even at workplaces, they will tell us to close by one because of the traffic. And we only want to comply with it for maybe a week. After one week, we know Lagosians, we are done. Say, Please, it is your own you are talking about. The next, the, 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 the second level of, uh, of, of this development is that development is not about the government, but rather is about the government listening to the people about what they want. Government cannot just, the first level is where the government just tell the people what they should do. The second level should bring some level of inclusiveness in it. And by bringing that inclusiveness in it, it allows for room for, uh, for a tete a tete amongst them to have a, a rapport to, to reach a logical conclusion so that they can know what the people's yearnings actually uh, is. So when they understand what the people's needs are, then they are able to say, okay, we are going to fit into it. We are going to solve this particular problem for you. So development can take place at a large scale when you make use of the Marshall Plan. But can we now infuse some of these our models into it? That's another question. Can we infuse some of these our models into it yes we can and one model we can infuse is the akada model we can infuse the uh uh p process model we can as well infuse what is known as um, uh the sem model for the akada model from our assessment which is why please don't forget it i said i noted that it is imperative it is very very important to note that every country is unique same way every country is unique is the same way the geopolitical environments are dynamic. They are they, they change. Same way they are equally unique. So the strategy you will employ for this environment is different from the strategy you employ for another environment. For Nigeria, for instance, the Akada model can be put to use and it will fit very well. First, we do our assessments. What is the problem? What has been happening? Take our records and then come together afterwards in our communication analysis. Put all of these as sub-steps into use, from problems to what is known as behavior, to participation, to channels and media, to communication objectives, and our indicators. These ind indicators are very, very key. Problem is where you, you ask yourself a series of questions. 
And when you provide answer, and, and, and this is at the communication analysis stage, where your team will be the ones to provide answers to some of those things. Your behavior, the ideal behavior, the current behavior, the priority behavior, these are some of the things you have to check. And the next one is the participation. The key stakeholders who want to solve the issue of Almagiris or the girl, let me start using boy child education in Nigeria, for instance. Who are those that are the stakeholders? The parents are the stakeholders. Even the children, the male child, are major stakeholders. The kings, the emirs, the governor, they are equally all major stakeholders. And we shouldn't forget we have over 36 states. Every governor in each of the states is a major stakeholder because the information we get to them from the federal level, or you have to, you at the federal level, doing your communication analysis, we have to fathom each and every one of these major stakeholders into your plan at your, com at, at your communication and, uh, analysis. And you have to do what is known as your channels and media. What do they listen to the most? If you are uh, 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 send, uh, uh, projecting a particular, you, you intend to have an inter, inter, a, a federal intervention on the people of, of IA. Now, you can come on radio or come on air and then start speaking Queen's English. My people here will be looking at you to say, Ebo Onin Solenu. They are not ready to listen to you. But when you speak their own Yoruba that they speak here, same thing for the Eagles. When you speak in their own language, then they are ready to relate with you. I don't understand Igbo, but if I want to buy something from, from an Igbo man, the moment I pick up one I want to buy and I'm saying, one and I look so much like Igbo, it feels I'm an Igbo man already, and then it probably reduce the price for me. And they ask questions, are you selling wholesale or are you selling uh, 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 by, uh, by piecemeal? So we need to consider some of those things in our communication analysis at the, at the national level as well. And we need to do what is known as communication objectives. What do we intend to achieve? And that was where we were talking about uh, meaning what you say at the end of the day, so that people know what you're talking about. They will do have our indicators amongst ourselves. From our process indicator, the short term, the medium indicator, which is uh, the uh, impact, and the outcome indicator, which is the long term. From there, we move to our design. How do we design our message? And when designing this message, we should be able to consider the cultural aspect of it, their religious aspect of it, their local beliefs, in terms of even their colors, what appeals to them the most. We need to design, when designing our message, we need to ensure we do all of this. And in the course of this designing, we need to pretest as well. We pretest some of this content. So, okay, is it going to work? We intend to make use of this in Lagos. Now, let us pretest amongst the people of Ali Mosho and people of uh, Ikeja first before we decide to do the entire Lagos state full scale. That is you pretesting. If it doesn't work between the people of Ali Mosho and uh, Ikeja, then it's as good as something is wrong with the content of that message, meaning you have to now do what? Revise. You look at it again. And after designing, then you go to your action. That is your implementation. You implement your plan. Everything you put them to use. You train people. You even train the trainers. So at the end of the day, you bring your plan to life with the hope that, yes, this intervention you've done will bring about not only a behavioral attitudinal change, but rather this behavioral and attitudinal change will translate to a societal and national change, whether it is positive or negative. And you know, or you get to know whether they are, whether it has translated to a societal uh, uh, change. Please, I hope you guys can hear me. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yes, sir. Very well, very well. So you get to know whether or not this has translated to societal change, this behavioral or attitudinal change has translated to societal change only when you've done what is known as your evaluation and monitoring. And you evaluate, you can evaluate as well using your, your impact and your outcome indicators. It's so, okay, now in three months, let us see if our people are beginning to change. An example of, this, of it is this. The rate at which people give birth to children has reduced. Now, we parents of nowadays, what do we do? We are, we are okay with two and three. Even if our grandma, the children's grandparents are beginning to say, uh, uh, you have to give birth to five, oh, your, your mother gave birth to eight. You have to try 13. We don't listen to them because the reality is there. That is why I said our geopolitical environment are dynamic. 
The reality then is different from the current realities now. So some of these things are what we, we should put in place. And you get to note some of these things, whether or not they've translated positively or negatively, using your indicators, your key mark indicators, your impact indicators. Same thing with the issue of polio in Nigeria, where you see all these women from hospitals or general hospitals go around house to house campaign and tell you to bring out your little children of between ages uh, zero to like maybe three for them to take, uh, what do they call it, vaccine. Now, today, the issue of polio in Nigeria is a story of the past. I think last year, we had two cases in the north. And that was one of the, one of the ways through which someone, an individual, decided to bring awareness to this. It was a man who actually rode his bike from London to Lagos. It is also to create awareness. And this awareness is to tell the government, this is what the people equally, we don't want the issue of polio uh, anymore in Nigeria. So this is a national issue. When we start looking at Akada from that, from that, but evaluation will allow us to know whether there's a societal attitudinal change. Are people still contracting the virus HIV and AIDS? Yes, they are. But is it the same rate, at the same rate it used to be before? It used to be before. The answer, I can't say whether it is no, because I've not conducted any research in respect of that. But I can project to say, okay, maybe no. Now, the issue of gonorrhea. The rate at which people contract it then and now, as it reduced, we can still say yes, because to an extent, there have been so many interventions of the uh, 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 telling people to change their attitude uh, and uh, their behavior towards having sexual intercourse. So, okay, make use of protection so as to reduce this. Now, if it reduces uh, the rate at which people contract deadly virus, uh, virus out there, then it, it increases life expectancy meaning it is translating to a national change. Lagos today, the rate at which we used to have traffic before has reduced to what is obtainable currently. Why? Because of the price of premium motor spirit. If the government had known that for a long time, maybe by t we'll start, we would have started buying a premium motor spirit per liter at maybe 600 or 700 naira. Nobody will, uh, will, everybody will now start to consider, okay, because of the price of the premium motor spirit, a family of five, father, mother, three grown children, each of them has cars in their compound, are now forced to make use of just only one car. And when we go out there in Lagos today, we, are, we don't go out based on luxury anymore. We go out or drive our cars based on necessity. As that translated to an extent, if, uh, a, 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 a national change, the answer is yes. And what is the intervention here? The unknown intervention here is the price of premium auto spirits. So the Akada, how do we get to know this? Is when we are doing our evaluation. There is no uh, uh, top, uh, model that you bring to use for the Marshall Plan that will not work. Each and every one of this, uh, each and every one of this model will work and will fit in perfectly. Again, we should avoid information dumping to communication. Rather, we should talk with the members of the public. And in, in doing this, we should ensure equality in the distribution of information. Ensure equality in the distribution of information, meaning allow for a two-way communication process. I want to believe we all understand the meaning of a two-way communication process. We should give room for that. Secondly, we should ensure that uh, the pop, uh, there should be population participation. Governments, or uh, irrespective of their dynamics, should not transmit as possible to bring about development in isolation, but rather there should be key participatory process in it. So at the end of the day, everybody can say, yes, I'm a part of this. This is our project. This is meant for us and we are not li leaving any stone unturned. So we should put all of these things in place because that is what will bring about social change. One thing was mentioned in that material, that's the, that is a, the diffusion of innovation. We all must have heard of this theory, diffusion of innovation. The diffusion of innovation there is trying to tell us uh, about the need for us to make use of the modern ways of doing things that can allow us achieve development or attain that projected development. I want to talk about diffusion of innovation. I don't want to go into it too deep. We have so many people, set of people, or categories of people in that diffusion of innovation. We have those who are the early adopters. Sorry, 
we are those who are the innovators. The innovators here are the government that tells you this is what we want to give to the people. Or the innovators here could even be a private entity to say this is the way we want to solve this problem for our people if the government are not ready to do it. And we can as well say the innovators is a public private partnership. That is the government and the private entity uh, are coming together to solve a particular problem. Those are the innovators. Followed by the early adopters. The early adopters, you find them that they are key beneficiaries of a theory in communication that we refer to as uh, the knowledge gap theory. They are the ones that will benefit from it because they are close to the innovators. And these are the elites. When they get hold of this information towards development, they are the first person to adapt it. The early adopters. They will adapt to it. They will key into it immediately to say, ah, this is going to benefit a lot of the populace in terms of development. Let me be the first to key into it. Second, thirdly, we have the late adopters. The late adopters are we, the populace. When this intervention comes to us, we will now be split into two. Is it that we become the early adopters under the late adopters now? We become early. Some of us will... We equally pick it to say, okay, thank God we, are, we have this information. And we have another people refer to them as the laggard. The laggard will say, this is your intervention you are bringing. Let us see what will even happen first. I don't think this thing will work. They will be skeptical at the end of the day. It is for development too, but they will still tell you, why should you tell me to come and be making use of condom for society at Junache? I'm okay with it, daddy. But they will want to watch. Look at people that made use of it. What is very good. It's just like the COVID-19 jabs, the vaccine that they asked us to come and start taking. I, for one, I took it once and I felt ill for like three days. And I said, if I should take the second one, then probably it is for documentation because I, would, I dare not because of what I felt. And I was, an, a, 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 I was part of the laggard. The intervention of that COVID-19 is for our own development too. That's why the fact that I'm educated, I was still looking at to say, let us even see what will happen with this vaccine. We'll take vaccine now. They, they, they will say we are now part of CCCs. We'll take vaccines now. They will say the government can control our mind. We'll start coming up with different conspiracy theories in our head because we are part of the laggard. And this thing, this intervention they brought to us, it is for development. So diffusion of innovation will put people in different positions. And you start asking yourself a series of questions. You say, okay, should I be part of those that were adopted? Because the vision of innovation here is only telling us this is the new ways of doing things to achieve the expected development or the projected development, which is why you find the Red Cross, International Red Cross will bring AIDS, uh, Food Relief will bring AIDS, UNICEF will bring AIDS. And then you have refugee, refugee camps here and there across the world. Everybody bringing their AIDS so as to cushion the effects of, of death rates amongst those people. So development communication, to wrap it up, we can make use of any model at all. When it comes to planning an SDG, just pick one SDG. Channel any of this development uh, 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 communication model to it, and then you can achieve whatever you want to achieve with it. If you have a group work, pick any of the models that we've explained in this class. Channel it, just link it up. If there is one thing I learned from my lecturers, they are also product of University of Lagos, Professor Aziz and uh, Dr. Mustafa. When they, uh, when they intend to set their question, they set it in such a way, it is not what is question, it is an application question. Pick a project, know what you want to discuss, understand the model, and then apply it. That is what you have to do with this exam. So now I've explained, I've given points under your Marshall Plan as well. And let me reiterate those points again for the benefit of those that couldn't get that. I think I'm going to share that with with uh, with, this, with uh, Mrs. Nancy. Uh, let me do the sharing uh, right away. So number one there is the investment infrastructure. Number two has to do with um, uh, human capital development. Three, public-private partnership. Four, economic diversification. Five, transparency and accountability. Six, regional cooperation. Seven, long-term commitment. Eight, adaptability. Nine, job political considerations, and 10, monitoring and evaluation. I guess this is where I have to stop.
uh, tonight. Please, I hope you guys can hear me. Yes, sir, we can hear yes, you. Yes, we can. All right, so this is where I have to stop tonight. So I'll share the material with um Marshall and is you have any question at all? Yes, please. Can you hear me, sir? Please go ahead. Yeah. I just want to ask. Sorry, I just want to ask that because yes, my understanding of this particular chapter is that uh, Moi Maker is of the opinion that the Marshall Plan would not work in developing countries like Asia, Africa, and the Latin America because yes. they have not really developed. And yes. because those that colonized us are gaining from the investment, from the financial yes. aids, from the international community, one, and that the Asia, Africa, and the Latin America themselves are so eager to develop. So we are adopting the Marshall Plan, which is not working for us. That yes. instead of adopting the Marshall Plan, why can't we adopt a talk with model that will consider the social, political, and uh, other structure of uh, our country, our, our, our continent? I mean, people that... Uh, constitute the continent itself who are not really developed like people in the Europe who adopted the advancement in technology and stuff like that because they are already developed. Can we now say what Moimeka is saying is that a Marshall Plan isn't working in a continent like Africa or he's saying we should infuse the Marshall Plan to other a structure that uh, we can adopt in Africa. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Do I have any other person uh, with a question so I can take it? Okay, um, so mine is more of a comment. Um, okay. First, there's, you said a lot, you drew a lot of lessons from, from um, this Marshall Plan. And I, I think some of the things you are mentioning are, 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 are they are innovative and they are more, more recent developments, like PPP, um, regional participation, and um, looking at geopolitical issues. This Marshall Plan was, um, as, as we explained earlier, after the World War, after the Second World War, which was in the 19, I think around the 50s or thereabouts, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And this, um, this thing was applied after it. I think you said 10 years, the 10 years gap. So the results where it, where it worked, it was applied around the 1960s to 1970s. And then it was brought to developing countries. But it was brought with the mindset uh, of the magic, the magic that it worked in those, uh, in those countries. But it failed here because we didn't take into cognizance, they didn't take into cognizance the socioeconomic issues. Yeah. Socioeconomic issues, the belief system, and then they didn't talk to the people, they didn't talk, they didn't discuss with the people it was talking to. So they just felt if they were to invest, if they were to build technology, and if they were to build industrialization, people would, yeah, things would grow. But, but contrarily, they, we are in an environment where um, um, that, was not, that was not the primary goal, goal of the people. But people were more focused about community development. Success was seen in terms of how you could contribute to the society and not how much you could make. So that, that um, commercialism was not, that commercial drive was not, that industrialization wasn't there. But if Marshall Plan is brought today into Africa, especially in a country like Nigeria, where industrialization is striving, or government is looking towards industrialization and looking towards growing exports, the results would have been different from what from bringing Marshall Plan some 10, 20 years ago. So I also want to know where you, how you get to the lessons. I know you, you, are, you are mentioning from the book that she, that, that she gave to us, we don't have as much is not as loaded and as innovative as the way you're explaining the Marshall Plan, because you're explaining it from the point of view of how to how to work in Nigeria today. Whereas what we have in that material that the lecturer gave to us is the Marshall Plan and how it and why it failed in developing countries, whereas it worked in the other um, in the countries where it was deployed. And at that time, the countries where it was deployed and recorded success, they already had they were used to industrialization. So industrialization was not a new concept to them. 
uh, at the time. Whereas here in Africa and developing countries, the last 20 to 30 years, even till now, we are still struggling with industrialization. So these are just my my yeah. thoughts on it. All right, thank you very much. The Moemeka is of the assertion. But, um, the question I was able to pick here was what better example of development strategy could there be for the developing countries in a yori to improve their own social and economic um, uh, conditions? Majority of these developing countries, Marshall Plan worked for some developing countries then. We can't compare what we had in the 1960s after the Second World, 10 years after the Second World War, to what is obtainable today. And it failed it in some contexts, uh, simply because the geographical dynamics were not uh, uh, put to use, were not considered before they start making use of the Marshall Plan. Now, if we were to make use of the Marshall Plan in today, today, right now as we speak, if we were to make use of the Marshall Plan, the lessons we can draw from it was what I explained earlier. So the reason why it failed are the things, the things people didn't put to use then where the things were like 10 items, I think up to nine to 10 items that I drew out to say, this is the reason why it failed. Had it been, they had made use of it. Now, if developing countries today were to make use of it today, then the Marshall Plan is likely to be successful. And speaking of a um, uh, uh, model that, could be make, uh, that we could make use of to ensure that it works, we can make use of any model at all. Whatever model comes to our head, it is just for us to understand the model and our best to 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 channel it uh, uh, to to the Marshall Plan. But not that Marshall Plan was successful across the globe. There are certain uh, areas where it worked, and in today's environment, then they were looking out for uh, industrialization. Today, China is one of the countries that is about industry. Nigeria today, being one of the biggest markets in Africa, is equally looking towards industrialization. Because of some of the things they are likely to, 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 to gain, to benefit from it. Because Marshall Plan itself had a message. It, it had just only one single message. Rapid development of any society is possible if adequate international financial and technological assistance were forthcoming. But in Africa today, some of these things, are they what we need? Technological assistance. The place where we burn almost sometimes even twenty percent of our added money today is on technology. But what is it bringing back to us in return? Only few of us are benefiting from it. But we need it to be in society, to be in large scale. Fine, it has reduced even the mode of communication. Technology has reduced the way we the the, the man uh, a man has to work. The international financial assistance, they equally tell us using the Marshall Plan to forestall on the development in some of these development countries is equally still put, it is still putting us in deeper mess on daily basis. Which is why I would tell, they still tell us Nigeria is owing so so and so amount of money. They are the ones that are still borrowing us this money. Marshall Plan could either work or fail. If it is to work, what are the lessons that can be drawn from it? Those are the lessons that I listed. And if you want it to work, using your own SDG, I've been able to like marry all of these things together with your own SDGs as well. Consider, one thing is primary here, consider what is known as your, your geographical dynamics. What are the differences that you have? What separates your own environment to another environment? Mr. Kenneth uh, Jukwo is raising up his hand. Do you have any question? No, it was the old handle. I've dropped it. Thank you. All right. All right. So I hope I, whatever stand you intend to keep, just try as much as possible to be able to justify it. That's just it. Try as much as possible to be able to justify it and give more than enough points for your justification. Oh. All right, thank you, Barbara. I think uh, someone is raising up her hand again. Please go ahead. Hey, thank you, sir. Please, my question is sometimes I find it difficult 
knowing how to identify indicators in SDGs. So please, uh, could you help me with that? Indicators. Well, we'll talk, speaking of indicators, the SDGs. Uh, I, for your what? SDGs. You need to pick what type of SDG. You need to, we need to know which one you are looking at. You have almost 17. Like a, any one of them, how to identify. Well, let's say we are looking at education. You are looking at education. If you are looking at education, I've given examples of what is known as your, your, your key indicators. Uh, the first one there is your, is your process indicator, followed by what is known as the impact indicator. And then the last one is your outcome indicator. And the, the process indicator, you do that, you do these three of uh, process indicator, impact indicator, and outcome indicator only when you are doing your communication analysis. But when you are done implementing your plan, when you are done implementing your plan, what you should do only then is just your uh, um, process. What you should do then is just your impact and outcome analysis. And you do this impact and outcome analysis, your impact analysis can be done um, probably quarterly. You can choose to say, okay, I'll be doing this impact analysis uh, every four months. And it, when, you are, uh, when you are to apply this to education, let's take, for instance, the girl-child education, or a, a, a situation where you've, you've, you've done your assessments, you notice they are not uh, uh, in a particular community or in a particular geopolitical zone, they hardly send their girl-child to, 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 to schools. Then you've done your implementation. Then you can go back again when you're doing your evaluation under your indicator. Go back after four months to check the effectiveness of the message or the effectiveness of the intervention itself. So when you're able to do this, then people can be able, you can be able to say, okay, I've done an impact evaluation or an impact analysis of this intervention, of this SDG. After four months, you go back to check the efficacy. Before the program, how many girl, girls were in class? Was it one? Now, after the program, after four months after your inter intervention, how many could you record at that moment? Is it four? Is it five? Then you go back to do your outcome uh, analysis. On these are your outcome is equally an indicator. Your outcome analysis allows you to be able to know the, the number the number of students you now have in class after a year or two, which is what which is long term. And don't forget, it is not only your NGO or it is not only your own your your only your own organization that is into this. Another organization is likely to pick it up again in another three years to continue from there and so on. So I hope I'm able to answer your question. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. I was actually asking, uh, not like uh, having an NGO, it's just like uh, evaluating or assessing a particular SDG. Just it's still the same way. It's about your medium okay. term and your long term. Right. Medium term and long term. That is the way you evaluate. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. It's time for me to go to my house. I think I spent more than enough time in office thank already. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, sir. You are appreciated. Right. All the best thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.